But I would put Russia right now from a military perspective as the number one threat. I would also add uh, China, North Korea, uh, and ISIS, uh, along with Iran. While the United States has been engaged in counterinsurgency operations in the Middle East and Afghanistan, our adversaries have made other investments, creating multiple layers of standoff capabilities that are as good, or in some cases, better than our own. Among the most critical areas of adversary investment are electronic warfare, integrated air defense, counter space and precision navigation and timing, cyber and social media, recon information strike complex, use of UAVs, massed artillery and fires, protection, proxies, deception and ambiguity, CBRN, WMD. But as we learned when we fielded the Big Five, materiel is by itself not decisive. Capabilities require a modernized approach across doctrine, organization, training, science and technology, leadership and education, personnel, facilities, policy, experimentation and learning. When we apply this lens to the operational environment, we find our most capable potential adversaries are Russia and increasingly China. Both Russia and China possess capable militaries with many similarities between the two in terms of their focus on area denial, anti-access capabilities that focus on standoff, the types of systems they employ, their ability to challenge us across all domains, and their sophisticated approach to cyber and information operations. Both also have robust military research and development and technology acquisition programs focusing on a range of advanced capabilities, including hypersonics, artificial intelligence, directed energy, railguns, advanced human performance, and quantum computing, among others. But the differences largely come in three areas, geography, capacity, and capability. Over the past three years, in a series of war games, experiments, simulations, and tests, against the anticipated adversary of 2030, the Army has identified several key gaps which must be addressed and eliminated. If the United States is to prevail over our adversaries, we require the proper capabilities strategically positioned during the competition period that are able to effectively integrate with whole-of-government capabilities designed to challenge our adversaries across increasingly complex diplomatic, information, military, and economic spheres. China and Russia will continuously exploit the conditions of the operational environment to achieve their objectives without resorting to armed conflict by fracturing the U.S.'s alliances, partnerships, and resolve. They attempt to create standoff through the integration of diplomatic and economic actions, unconventional and information warfare through social media, false narratives, or cyber attacks, and the actual or threatened employment of conventional forces. And if we should find ourselves in a conflict, we need to prevail in all domains in an environment characterized by the potential for overmatch and standoff operations in complex terrain contested in all domains across the full spectrum of operations, where cyber increases the momentum of human interaction, but where the soldier and leader remain the decisive edge of the decisive force.